Hi, St. Catherine's. Christ is risen. Yesterday, Father Lou, in his um, reflection, mentioned how all of Bright Week is uh, liturgically celebrated as one single day. That this whole week is a continuous celebration of our Lord's resurrection, a celebration of Pascha, of the Passover from death to life. Now, since this whole week is a celebration of the Lord's resurrection, I wanted to reflect on one of the Matins' resurrectional gospel readings known as the Road to Emmaus. Now, if you have your gospels with you, please turn to Luke chapter 24, verse 13 through 27. If you don't have it, that's fine too. I'll just uh, summarize it real quickly. So, in the Road to Emmaus reading, We have two disciples. Now later we'll see that they report to the eleven, Judas excluded, what had happened. So what we know off the bat is that they are two disciples of the seventy. Not of the twelve, but two of the seventy. And so what happens is they're walking along from Jerusalem to Emmaus. And on their way they're talking about everything that's happened. They're talking about how the Messiah who they had followed who they hoped was the Messiah, was crucified. But since he's crucified, they're not sure if he was, after all. But what's even more bizarre in what they're talking about is that some of the women have said that the tomb was empty and that he has even appeared to them, that he has now risen. They weren't sure to believe it in one of the other Gospel readings that says that it, is, it seemed to them an idle tale. Well, while they're, ta- while they're talking with each other on their way, Jesus himself appears to them and begins to walk with them. Now, what's significant here is they didn't recognize him. They weren't just anybody. They were 70 of the disciples that followed him, and they didn't recognize him. And so, as Jesus is walking with them, and them not seeing who he is, he opens the entire Old Testament scripture to them and shows from Moses in the law of, in the, the law of Moses, in the prophets, and all of the Psalms pointed to Christ and showed that the Messiah must die, be buried, and resurrect from the dead. While they're still walking, it becomes evening, and um, Jesus, it says that he was acting as though he were going to continue on. So the two disciples say, please stay with us. And it, they prepared a meal. And it says that in the breaking of bread, their eyes were opened. They saw Jesus. And then Jesus vanishes. This is the gospel reading. Uh, it's a crazy story, and I want to go into it a little bit more uh, because it will appear even more crazy in a minute. First, I want to point out, I'm standing in a church, obviously, <laughs> and I'm doing this because uh, every liturgy actually reflects this gospel reading. Every uh, liturgy begins the first part, the liturgy of the um, word, begins with the opening of the scriptures. And then we go on to interpret the scriptures, um, showing how the whole, every page, the whole Bible, every page actually speaks of Christ. And then from then, we move on to the liturgy of the faithful or the Eucharist. And it is in our own personal illumination. So we had the illumination of the scriptures. And now, moving to the liturgy of the faithful, we have our own personal illumination um, and our own eyes being opened to in the breaking of bread. Um, I would like, so let's take a minute, uh, moving on, let's move on and uh, let's look at verse 18. Um, In verse 18, it tells us that one of these disciples who I haven't mentioned by name, was Clopas. I hope that name sounds familiar. It's thrown around a lot um, in in the scriptures. And he comes up often. 
And uh, then, but St. Cyril of Alexandria tells us that the other uh, disciple was actually Simeon, the son of Clopas. So Eusebius furthers this too and tells us that Clopas was the brother of Joseph the betrothed. Um, So these disciples aren't just anybody. These are pretty significant disciples. Um, This is confirmed in John 19.25. You don't have to go there. I'll just um, quote it. It says that standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas and Mary Magdalene. So we have three Marys. The mother of Christ, Mary's sister, Mary, and then Mary Magdalene. Have you ever wondered how Mary could have a sister with the same name? Unless, of course, you're George Foreman, you don't name all of your kids the same name. It just doesn't happen. But with what um, Eusebius tells us, that actually Clopas is the brother of Joseph the betrothed, that means that Mary, uh, it's not her sister, but her sister-in-law that shares the same name. This, what this also means is that Jesus, once again, didn't appear to just anybody, but he appeared to his uncle Clopas and to his cousin Simon or Simeon. Uh, the name is uh, spelt differently, referring to the same person. Uh, And as a side note, Eusebius continues and tells us that the bishops of Jerusalem for the first several generations all were relatives of Christ. And he goes on specifically and he says, uh, I'll quote this too. It says that in this persecution, I think it was Nero, um, in this persecution we have learned that Simon or Simeon, it's spelled both ways in his text, uh, the son of Clopas, whom we have shown to have been the second bishop of Jerusalem, gave his life by martyrdom. So uh, this was a side note about how these aren't just anybody and that he, they couldn't see them. This was truly uh, something unique. But I want to focus on two things from this gospel that we too can take away. This passage shows us that uh, we must... Uh, uh, th- I'm sorry... The first thing is that all scriptures point to Christ. Jesus gives us the interpretive key to understanding the entire Old Testament. If we don't see Christ on every page of the scripture, we did it wrong. We misunderstood this passage of scripture and we need to re-evaluate it. Going along with this, um, Origen tells us, he says, and let me quote here too, he says, This passage of um, the road to Emmaus shows that we must not only employ zeal to learn the sacred literature, but we must also pray to the Lord and entreat day and night that the Lamb of the tribe of Judah may come and himself taking the sealed book. This is a quote from Revelation 5, 5. Taking the sealed book of the whole scriptures that he may deign to open it for us. For it is he who, opening the scriptures, kindles the hearts of the disciples, so that they may say, Did not our hearts burn within us while he opened to us the scriptures? Christ himself gives us an example for studying the scripture. So let us study the scripture and see how Christ is the fulfillment of the entire Old Testament. In this, let us also cultivate a zeal and a burning for Christ to better understand the Bible. The second thing I want to point out corresponds with the liturgy. So we have the liturgy of the faithful, the burning desire we should cultivate in the studying of the scripture, the liturgy of the word, and now the liturgy of the faithful in the Eucharist. Um, And in the Eucharist, the breaking of the bread, Jesus, it says, opened his eyes. So there's a quote from St. Augustine that I would like to quote too. He says, Remember, though dearly beloved, 
how the Lord Jesus desired to be recognized in the breaking of bread by those whose eyes had been kept till uh, till then from recognizing him. The faithful know what I'm talking about. They know Christ in the breaking of bread. It isn't every loaf of bread, you see, but the one that receives Christ's blessing and becomes the body of Christ. I want to conclude uh, with the conclusion of the two disciples. They went to share the good news with others that Christ was risen. Let us do the same. Let us study the scriptures, receive the Eucharist, and be both illumined in the scriptures and in the receiving of Christ. And let us then go out and share with others what Christ has done in our own lives, but also in salvation history. So let us be reminded this week that this is all a week of Pascha, all one liturgical day, that Christ is risen. Our Lord Jesus Christ is risen from the dead, and he lives and reigns with God the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. God bless, and I look forward to seeing you soon.